If you're like me, you've seen a lot of ads on social media for something called Neom. Made to change. No. No, Mo, it is. Neom. Hey, what are you girls talking about? Neom. What is Neom? This is Neom. Neom is a massive infrastructure project in the Saudi Arabian desert, and the jewel in its crown is the Lime, a futuristic city which looks insane. And the line, a 500 meter high, 200 meter wide, 170 kilometer long city in the shape of, well, a line. The AI generated ads depict a car free city for 9 million people housed in a 200 meter space between two mirrors stretching along the desert. There are no roads. And everything its 9 million residents could ever need within a five minute walk. There's a service layer below which supplies the buildings and under that layer are trains. Nearby is the rest of Neon. There's a floating business park in the shape of an octagon. There's Octagon, a thriving city at the crossroads of the world. There's an island resort in the Red Sea. There's always Sindala, one of Neom's many beautiful islands. There's also a ski resort in the middle of the desert. They're planning to make snow. It's the biggest construction project in modern history and all aimed at shifting the centre of international business in the Middle East from Dubai to Saudi Arabia. Or here, to be more precise, in the northwest of Saudi Arabia. Except it's not here. Despite promises of millions of residents by 2030, the project has been scaled back by 98%. The line will be more like a dot. So what the hell happened? And was it all just a big scam? I'm Matt Bevan, and this is If You're Listening. Neom is the brainchild of the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, a man who is more complicated than he seems. There's really two of them. One is Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud, the traditionally dressed heir to the throne in the ultra-conservative Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And then there's MBS, the nickname he goes by when he's dressed in jeans and a blazer and meeting with Silicon Valley businessmen. In 2018, he was being MBS, traveling the world and making it clear that he wanted to be a major player in the future of the global economy. He used Saudi government money to make big investments in big tech companies like Uber, Boeing, Facebook and Disney, hoping that the bets would prove to be winners both financially and for his reputation. You see, Saudi Arabia has a problem. A pretty obvious one, really, and that is that there is almost nothing in it at all. For most of the last thousand years, only a small population of nomadic Bedouin tribes lived there, in one of the hottest, driest places on earth. There is a biblical curse on the Middle East, that the land shall be desolate and the rivers shall run like oil. But then all that changed. Since oil money started flowing into Saudi Arabia, its population has gone up enormously. But Mohammed bin Salman knows that oil money isn't forever and will likely start to dry up soon after he inherits a country with 20 times the population of the one that his grandfather ruled over. So ever since he became heir to the throne in 2017, the business prince has been trying to plan ahead. And that's how he came up with his big idea. Four months into his tenure, he held an event in the Saudi capital Riyadh called the Future Investment Initiative. All sorts of global business figures were there, but he was the headliner. Let me introduce the vision behind that growth story. Please welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, His Royal Highness, Prince Mohammed bin Salman. And his big announcement, the project that would save Saudi Arabia and make it the economic capital of the region, was Neom. A roadmap for the future of civilization. We see a new way, a new era. We see Neom. The thing about this video was, it was actually really quite familiar. You see, the idea of a brand new city has been tried before, a few times in fact, like King Abdullah Economic City. Imagine a city 
a unique partnership between government and the private sector at the crossroads between East and West. This was launched in 2005 by the former Saudi king. A new world city for Saudi Arabia, a new Saudi Arabian city for the world. It looks a lot like Neom, but this is a completely different project with basically the same marketing. King Abdullah Economic City. Our story is only just beginning. But after 13 years, that story still hasn't really begun. Only 7,000 people were living in King Abdullah Economic City, despite having high-speed rail connections to three of the country's biggest cities. It's still just a small town, less than one percent of its projected size. A government official told the Financial Times that the marketing was amazing, but the whole concept behind it was flawed because the economic base was never there. There are cities like this all over the Middle East. Ghost towns, dreams of paradise cooked up by oil-rich kings and dictators. In Turkey, there's a city built of 732 identical castles, all of which look like the Disney logo. It has been abandoned. In Iran, there are a number of cities surrounding the capital, Tehran, with completed towers standing empty. The issue is usually that there are not enough jobs to sustain a population. Creating a city out of nothing does work sometimes. Just take Australia's capital city, Canberra. The industry there is the Australian federal government. Order. Which creates a lot of jobs in the public service. But even then, Canberra's founders thought it would rival London in size. A hundred years on, London is still 22 times bigger than Canberra. Neom has no industries, or um, water. But that's only the start of its problems. At a basic level, building anything in Saudi Arabia has been a tricky thing in the last six years. When MBS first came to power and started spruiking his business-minded vision for the future and minor human rights reforms, there was initial excitement. It caused a surge in foreign investment. But then, investors got cold feet after he started locking up his political opponents and killing dissident journalists. Jamal Khashoggi was murdered just minutes after he walked into Saudi Arabia's consulate in Istanbul. For two years after MBS allegedly ordered the murder of a Washington Post journalist, foreign investment in Saudi Arabia ground to a halt. But since the gruesome murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi, its international reputation has been low. It's only now that things are starting to warm up again. But the other, much bigger problem with Neon is that just because the ideas behind it are exciting and different doesn't mean that they're good. Bloomberg reporter Vivian Neerham spent six months looking into the project and told the ABC that the ideas are literally based on science fiction. Quite a lot of the ideas that they're working on are drawn from and inspired by literal science fiction works, you know, whether it be films or, or books, you know, or TV series. So there are architects and designers and scholars who are basically, you know, sent to draw inspiration from science fiction. She says that some of the stuff in the plan is, well... There's even a, an urban spaceport, sort of like a place that spacecrafts could land. I'm going to be very generous now and pretend that Neom has enough investment and that it isn't total sci-fi fantasy. So let me paint you a picture of what it would be like to live there. Shops, workplaces, friends, family, all of them will be either above you, below you, or up to 170 kilometres away up the line. What if we replace outdated urban services with new services driven by artificial intelligence? This means that you have to rely on lifts and trains to transport you literally anywhere you want to go, all somehow run by AI. I am personally a huge fan of public transport and trains specifically, but this idea is very much not good because Humans are like the king in a game of chess, great at going short distances in any direction. We don't like travelling far and we don't really like climbing. But the line breaks all of those principles. Not to mention the fact that the trains may be fast, but you will have to stop extremely frequently. 
You'll also spend a huge amount of time queuing for lifts and standing in lifts that also stop very frequently. Or you can take the stairs. It'll only take 3,000 stairs to get from the bottom to the top of the city. This thing, remember, is significantly taller than the Eiffel Tower. The wonderful futuristic city would very quickly start to feel like some kind of Star Wars themed dystopian prison planet. Building a city in a long straight line just doesn't make any practical sense. And we know this because the line isn't a totally new idea. It's been tried before, in Spain. The Ciudad Lineal, or Line City, was 400 metres across, based around a central boulevard with a tram running down the middle, and was built on the outskirts of Madrid. And guess what? The line part of the Line City has disappeared. They started with a narrow line, but then almost immediately the city expanded, and it's now completely surrounded by development. Okay, back to Neil. Back in April, Bloomberg reported that the line is going to be slightly less than 170 kilometres long. It's going to be about 2.4 kilometres long, which is 98% shorter. Investment, even from Saudi sources, is drying up. The project managers are now considering borrowing money to keep construction going. All of this adds insult to injury for the several thousand local people who have been forcibly removed from their homes to make way for construction of the line. But politically, the person most affected by this is MBS. The Saudi government is trying to build an economy less dependent on oil, reform its reputation and attract international investment. It needs projects like NEOM to succeed. I think it's clear what's happened here. At the age of 32, MBS became the de facto ruler of a country with enormous but limited wealth and tried to build a future for it using ideas that were straight out of science fiction. Simultaneously, he purged anyone who posed a threat to him, leaving him with only yes men. Then he threw the ideas out into the world, offering big contracts to international companies who wanted to help him. Now, these companies don't care if the idea is good. The project's Western consultants, designers, architects, marketing gurus, advertising executives, voiceover artists, and animators get paid by the hour. Why would you not want to work for Neon, apart from like ethics, lol? It's a bucket of money with only very vague outcomes way off in the future. We started this episode by asking whether this is a scam or not, and I think it is. But it's not us who's being scammed. It's not the people building it either. It's MBS. They're hiring now, if you're interested. That was fun. <laughs>